There is a debate raging on the internet about the shape of our planet and the socio-political implications of a conspiracy to hide the truth. One side adheres to the modern scientific consensus that our world is a sphere. The model states that the sun is stationary relative to the rest of the solar system and the solar bodies, including Earth, orbit the sun in a cyclical fashion. This motion is used to explain the various observations we make in nature. The path of the sun across the sky which determines our cycle of night and day, the cause of the seasons, the phases of the moon, eclipses, the cause of tides, the retrograde motion of other planets, and other terrestrial, solar, and celestial phenomena that we observe. These observations can only work if the Earth is a spherical shape that orbits our Sun. This model has been accepted by Western society for hundreds of years and seems to have done pretty well proving its validity over that time. Recently, there has been a resurgence of an older idea. It says that this heliocentric or sun-centric model we know today is incorrect. It states that the observations we make in nature are the result of a geocentric or earth-centered model. In this model, the mechanics of the solar system are reconfigured to support the idea. In order for this model to work, the earth must be a relatively flat plane to explain the observations we make in nature. In this model, the night-day cycle is not caused by a spinning spherical Earth relative to a stationary Sun, which shines its light toward the Earth, but rather an orbiting Sun traversing a circular path above the flat plane of the Earth. As the Sun approaches a point of observation on the Earth's surface, it becomes brighter and brighter, giving us our day. And as it moves away, it becomes darker and darker, giving us our night. This brightening and darkening being explained by a well-known and tested physical phenomena physicists call the inverse square law. It says, as a source of energy gets closer, its intensity changes in inverse proportion to the square of the distance. That's just a fancy way of describing something having more or less of an influence depending on its distance from a point of observation. In this case, the closer the sun is, the brighter it is, and vice versa. The sunrise and set are simply what we observe as the sun moves to and from a vanishing point on the horizon. The make or break factor, the heart of the heliocentric and geocentric models is the sun. It's everything. If the model can't accurately explain the motion of the sun, the model is false. It's very easy to determine. All we have to do is observe and describe what we see in nature and then compare that observation with each model. Whichever one accurately depicts what we observe is correct. So let's get off our computers, wake up early, go outside, and observe a sunrise. It's nighttime. We start to see the sky brighten, but no source of light is yet visible. As it gets brighter, the sun begins to peek up from behind the horizon. As the sun rises, its circular shape becomes apparent as it is no longer occluded by the horizon. The horizon line bisects the sun until it rises above the line. At this point, there is nothing blocking the full force of the sun's light and we have a hard time observing due to the intensity. It is very bright out now, and our morning has begun. Through the course of the day, we observe a disk of light, maintaining its brightness and size as it moves across the sky to the opposing horizon. The disk descends to the horizon again, and the observations we made that morning are displayed in reverse until the darkness takes hold once again. Whether you think the Earth is spherical, flat, or a tetrahedron, we can all stand in the same place at the same time and observe the same thing together. So this is it. We all agree that this is what we observe. 
No matter where we live on the planet, no matter our religion, skin color, or language, this is what we observe. Now that this is established, we only have to ask one question. Which model best explains the observation? In order to do this accurately and unbiasedly, I took the most advanced 3D animation software used by the most prominent visual effects houses in the world and built a precise and proportional version of each model in three dimensions. I took the exact sizes, motions, and distances for the Earth and Sun proposed by each model and created a perfect replication of each inside the computer, rather than distract from the basic principles being tested, no colors or geography have been added to the models. Only basic geometry and motions have been preserved. I tested the flat earth model first. The flat plane of the earth is at the bottom horizon line in the distance. A camera is placed six feet off the ground facing the horizon. The sun which is a constant size and distance from the ground, approaches from the horizon. This is the flat Earth sunrise. The reverse is the flat Earth sunset. Now let's take a look at the sphere Earth model. The camera is again placed six foot off the ground on a sphere which is the exact size of the Earth based on the standard English foot. In this 3D model, the Earth is represented by a sphere that is exactly 41.804 million feet in diameter. Notice that from this point of observation, six feet off the surface of a sphere the size of the Earth, as proposed by the heliocentric model, using the same units of measure, the horizon appears flat. In this 3D model, Another sphere representing the sun is placed at distance from the earth. The camera has been constrained to the surface of the sphere and the sphere has been animated to rotate according to the heliocentric model. When the animation is played back, this is what we observe. Now let's compare the two models we've built. Now let's compare those two models with our observation in the real world. To show the distances necessary for the curve of our Earth to become apparent, I have animated our camera launching off the surface of our 3D Earth sphere and measured the distances to the surface. In order to get the entire Earth into the shot in a reasonable amount of time, we've had to launch off the surface at 1.2 million miles an hour. By frame 17, 
we have reached an altitude of about 200 miles, which is the height of a space shuttle orbit. And you'll notice, even at this height, there is a very gradual curvature that can be observed on the Earth. It's not until we have traveled 11,500 miles from the surface that the whole Earth comes into view and the full curvature of the sphere can be observed. In this shot, we travel about 20,000 miles in one minute. Once again, here are the models compared to our real-world observation. And here is our camera launching from the surface. The flat horizon that we observe while standing on a spherical Earth is an illusion, but it can be explained. After giving the numbers and showing the animation, I don't know what else to say other than the Earth is gigantic. The Earth is so big that even at the distance of an orbiting shuttle, it still looks pretty flat. And our 3D model supports that. Footage from the shuttle itself supports that. But the further away you get, the more apparent that curvature becomes. Thank you.